Today I'm going to be unboxing and trying out the Riverpoint POP 3D Portable Scanner. This is a handheld 3D scanner which Riverpoint says can scan with an accuracy of 0.3mm using dual infrared sensors and an RGB camera. The addition of the RGB camera means that you can capture RGB color information for each data point as well and render full color 3D models. Riverpoint sent me their POP 3D starter kit to unbox and share with you. You can buy your own kit from their website, which I'll leave a link to in the video description. These come with three different options, which mainly differ in the inclusion of a turntable, which automatically rotates your models, and a mobile accessory kit, which makes it easier to use your mobile phone in conjunction with the scanner. At $600, they're not cheap, but they are priced quite competitively when you compare them to what else is available in the home 3D scanning space. So let's open up the box and see what it looks like. In the box we've got some marker stickers and a black background sheet. Then a box containing the POP scanner, a sample object to scan, which is a white bust, a mobile phone holder, and then a turntable with tracking markers already stuck onto the table. Now let's open up the POP scanner and see what's included in the box. We've got a quick start guide, user manual and warranty card. We've also got two scanner cables, one with USB type A and one with USB type C connectors. We've got a strip of blue tack, a telescopic stand for the scanner and lastly the POP scanner itself. So altogether you get quite a bit with this kit, it literally has everything you need to be able to complete your first couple of scans, including a few items like markers and a black background to make it easier to scan more difficult objects. The cables are a bit strange looking, there are USB 3 micro USB ports on the scanner end that also has two thumb screws, one on each side of the port to secure it to the scanner. This helps to ensure that the cable isn't pulled out of the scanner while it's being moved around, which is a nice addition. You're also given a USB-A and USB-C version of the cable, so it's compatible with more devices. The actual scanner is quite compact. On the front there are four visible elements. At the center is a projector, which I assume emits the infrared light for the two outer infrared sensors to detect. And on the left side of the projector is an RGB camera which shows you where the scanner is pointed and captures the color information for each scan point. On the bottom of the device is the tripod mount. And on the back is an indicator LED and then this button. Which to be honest I'm not sure what it does. It doesn't seem to be mentioned in any manual that I've seen. I thought it might have been a Wi-Fi pairing button or something similar, but this doesn't seem to be the case either. And then there's the USB port next to it. To use the scanner we need to download two software packages, HandyScan and Handy Studio, which have both been developed by Revopoint. Handy Studio is only available on Windows at the moment, but is used for editing and refining the models, for which HandyScan has some basic functionality as well. It's also worth noting that HandyScan is also available on iOS and Android. You can pair the scanner with your phone over Wi-Fi and scan directly to your mobile device, so you don't even need to use a computer. Their website also has a number of instruction manuals in a few different languages. While we're downloading the software, let's have a look at one or two of them. In addition to the standard user manual and quick start guide, they have more in-depth instructions for some common features that people might be wanting to scan. These each take you through the best settings to use and the process to get good quality scans of the feature. They even tell you which types of objects the scanner will have difficulty with and what you can do to be able to scan them. I started out by trying a scan of the included test object. I used the turntable to rotate the object and tried a few different orientations. The test object scanned in really well, which was to be expected. 
I cleaned it up a bit in Handy Studio and printed it out on my 3D printer. I'm actually really impressed with how well this print turned out. You can see that it's lost a tiny bit of definition in the features, but it has captured the model really well. Even the scale is pretty much perfect. I've used some 3D scanning apps on my phone before, and I can tell you that this is a massive improvement over anything I've seen from a phone app. Next I tried capturing a mug. I chose a mug because it was one of the objects mentioned in the manuals as being difficult to scan. So I figured that if I could get good results with a difficult object, then I'd definitely be able to scan easier models. What makes a mug difficult to scan is that it doesn't have many distinct features for the scanner to keep track of as it rotates. The handle's pretty much the only feature on an otherwise cylindrical object. So we have to make use of the dots on the turntable to help keep track of the rotation of the object. I've put the mug in the middle of the turntable and I've got the scanner set up to look down at the mug so that it captures a portion of the inside edge. In the scanning utility you can see a feed from the RGB camera in the top left and an infrared feed in the bottom left. You get a current render of the model and what the scanner is seeing in the middle of the screen. By setting the software up in marker mode you can see that the white markers on the turntable are being identified and are being displayed in red in the main model view in the middle. I then started the scan and allowed the model to make one full rotation. When using the markers you can't adjust the orientation of the object, so you have to do two scans to get both sides of the mug, one upright and then one turned over. The top half of the mug has come out quite well. We can see that the bottom portion of the handle is missing, but that'll hopefully get picked up when we scan the bottom of the mug. So I saved the upright model and then started a new scan to scan the underside of the mug. I again let it scan for a little over one revolution before stopping it and saving the model. Now that we've got the two sides of the mug scanned, we need to combine them. We can do this in Handy Studio using the merge function. This allows you to combine two models into a single model, which you could repeat over and over again if you have multiple angles of the same object which have each captured different details. The auto align feature didn't work at all on the mug. But this is again probably due to it not having enough features to properly identify the orientation of each model. So the second option is to identify alignment markers on the model to tell the software how to merge them. This was quite easy to do with the text and image on the mug. I mapped out six identification markers and then tried to merge them. This time it worked really well. The only real issue is that some of the resolution in the image has been lost and the white areas have developed a bit of a blue hue. I can only assume that this is because the images were probably not perfectly aligned. But this also makes me wonder why the software can't be used in some sort of RGB mode. This could automatically try and match the RGB color information on the model to get its orientation rather than trying to look at the point cloud information by itself. In any case, the actual 3D model came out pretty well for an object that was said to be difficult to scan. Next I wanted to try a model with some discernible features and some colour. I chose this one as it's still quite light, but has some texture to it, and also some smaller features and a hole between the arms, which is usually a bit of a challenge for scanners. This object also scanned impressively well. There were a couple of small spots on the face and neck which were obscured by arms and weren't captured, but it actually did a pretty good job of the rest. I tried the meshing option in the handy scan app, and this did a good job of filling in the gaps. The only downfall was that it lost a bit of definition in the bird, and made it appear a bit fatter and thicker. When I printed it out, you can see that the bird doesn't quite look like the model. 
Handy Studio had another effect. It meshed fine and kept the definition of the bird, but when trying to fill the gaps in the chest and face area, it filled the gap between the arms as well. And there doesn't seem to be an option to adjust this. My printer had some trouble printing the bird in that level of detail, but you can see it looks a lot more similar in size to the original model, although the arm area is now filled in. All in all, I still think it did a pretty good job on both. Aside from the bird, the model looks almost perfect. Even the carved texture was captured. Overall, I'm really impressed with the performance of the POP scanner, and I'd definitely recommend checking it out if you're interested in reproducing models at home, or if you're interested in a portable and affordable 3D scanner. Riverpoints have also recently launched the POP2 scanner, so have a look at that as an option as well, and let me know what you think of the scanner in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.